In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this ordinary light fixture and turn it into a ceiling fan, just like that. Like that. Coming up, right now. Hey everybody, Rudy here from the Home Improvement Channel with another video helping you do things around the house. In this video, we're going to take this ordinary ceiling light down and turn it into a ceiling fan. In order to do that, we're going to have to remove the original electrical box and turn it into a heavier duty ceiling fan bracket. You can do this with or without attic access, so it'll work either way. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, obviously the first thing we're going to have to do is remove this light. I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty of how to remove the light because every light is different. But uh, one of the important things that you're going to need to remember is make sure the power is turned off before you try this. Alright, so I'm going to come back when the light is down and we're going to continue from there. Okay, as you can see I got the light down. And uh, what we have here is uh, about the worst case scenario you can have for uh, switching a box in the wall or ceiling. We have four sets of wires in here and we have to get this box out of the ceiling. So in order to do that, you're going to have to separate all these wires, okay? As I said before, this is a, electric, a voltage sensor. That's the power is still on so make sure you get that power shut off when you're trying to do this because it's probably going to short with some other wires and you just don't want all that sparking up in the ceiling okay so what I did was is I took this tape just so you, this is for you guys you know so you can see how how to label these wires and to make sure they all go back the same way now I labeled all the wires and if you even want to go for a step further than that write down what your labels mean on a piece of paper that way you won't forget when you go to put it all back well where did that go oh I thought I thought it went there oh it doesn't work now you know what I mean just make sure you get it all back the same way so I'm gonna separate these wires and then I'll uh, I'll be back as you can see here I've uh, separated all the wires I even kinda twisted them together to make pulling them out of the box a little bit easier got four sets right here uh, you might get lucky when you do yours and there's only one set that only goes to the light. That's the ideal scenario. Uh, but it's actually better that I had this for the, uh, for the video because uh, some of you are going to run into this kind of a problem. So uh, at least uh, if you do, you'll see here what I did. Um, this is an older style box and it had these uh, retainers in here. I don't know if you can see. So there you go. Right there. Um, retaining the wires, you know, where they, where they come into the box at. If you have one of those newer blue boxes, they usually have a plastic spring that springs down on the wire. You'll have to fight with that. If you can break that spring off, you'll be better off when you go to pull the wires out. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, a tool like this. If you stick a screwdriver through here, you can determine which side the joist is on or truss. Uh, my joist is right on this side so I gotta pull that away from the truss and uh, the best way to do that is to pry it out. So I'm gonna move the camera so I don't get a bunch of dust falling right in my camera but you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah so just stick this up in the ceiling and just pull kind of pull away from the drywall so you don't mess up the drywall and just you gotta pull them nails loose can be a real pain in the neck. All right, the box actually broke, so that's fine with me. Make it easier to get it out box doesn't break you might have to take some kind of a tool and break it because with these ears attached to the box like this it's gonna make it hard to pull it back down through the same hole Now 
I had to bust the box up a little bit to uh, to get the wires freed out of there. And it's free. That's it. That's how you remove that box. If you have one of them oscillating tools that uh, has a blade on the end that goes like this, you might be able to use that, but you got to be real careful not to dig into the wires with that. Um, but I have used those before. Don't use a sawzall because uh, a sawzall is just too much uh, too much violence, and you're likely to hit a wire with that. Okay, so what I'm going to put in place of the original box is this uh, ceiling fan bracket. This goes between the joists and you unscrew it and it expands so that you uh, can tighten it up and then these fingers on the end, they dig into the wood. Just use this uh, box that mounts to it with a horseshoe around the top. Can you see that? There's a horseshoe and then the box screws to that and that gives, uh, gives it quite a bit of stability. This one is rated for about 70 pounds, so I don't see too many fans weighing more than that. I went ahead and expanded it some. Um, most of the time the ceiling joists are uh, 24 on center, which means you have about 22 and a half between the, uh, the joists. If you're in a ceiling with a floor, those are uh, going to be different, so you might not be able to expand it ahead of time. Okay, so I had a little bit of trouble getting it to seat against the other joist. It's a good idea to stick your hand up in there and make sure that that thing is not going to expand out on a piece of wire because there actually was a piece of wire on the other joist. And if you expand this out on a piece of wire, it's going to be a whole lot of sadness, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing this. When you expand that, make sure it's against wood and not a wire or a piece of pipe. All right, once you get the uh, assembly up there in the ceiling, get it centered in the hole this way, and then test fit your, uh, your box to make sure that it's gonna fit. Now, I know this is right up against the joist on this one side, and these feet are kind of sticking down right here, so the box is not gonna be able to sit all the way over in the center of the hole, but most ceiling fans have a pretty large uh, thing that goes to the ceiling. So if there's a little bit of drywall showing here, it's, it's gonna cover that up. Uh, there's just no other way to do it with that kind of a bracket. It sits up against the joist. So just tighten down the joist and make sure it's biting in real good. Gonna go ahead and put this horseshoe piece up in there. And uh, I went ahead and put the screws in it. If you notice here on the back side of this, it has these elongated holes. You can put two screws in it to get this started. Make it a lot easier to, uh, to get those screws started once you get it up in the ceiling. And make sure you put your uh, connectors in there for the wires. You don't want uh, the wires rubbing against uh, bare metal. All right, so you just work your wires in the connectors and then push that up in there and get, this, get it over the screws. Okay, as you can see, I've got the wires pulled through and tied back into their regular bundles. I've got the, uh, the box here screwed to the horseshoe around the bracket, and everything's all tightened up, ready to go. Uh, so you can just hang the fan off of this like you normally would install a fan. I'm not going to cover installing the fan because all the fans are different, and this video isn't about installing a ceiling fan. It's about how to change a light fixture into a ceiling fan. So I'll come back in a few minutes after I get the fan installed and um, we'll make sure it works. Okay guys, as you can see, I got the ceiling fan up there. It's running great. Uh, one thing that you should note, if you take down a regular light fixture like this and change it to a ceiling fan that has a light and you have a single 14-2 wire powering it with a single switch, you're gonna need to add a remote uh, to have separate light and fan control. This fan already came with the remote, so if you're shopping for a fan, that's one thing to keep in mind. Otherwise, it's going to be on and off, and you're going to have them stupid pull strings here to uh, control the fan and the light separately, so uh, make sure you keep that in mind. This particular fan is a Harbor Breeze. I thought it went together pretty good. Um, very smooth, and it runs good, quiet, and no wobbles. Uh, it's, it's a good fan. All right, if you enjoyed this video, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.